This meeting is called to order. Jill, you do honor the period for our place. Stand. Mr. Town of Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to be gathered here this afternoon. Thank you for all these that have assembled to do the work of this, your city. May all they say and do be for your glory and for their benefit. Be with those who are sick, heal each according to your will. Be with those who have loved ones gone on before, comfort them. May they always feel your presence. Be with those who are not able to be with us for whatever reason. All this we ask in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Fannin. Here. Mr. Graham. Here. Mr. Hatmaker. Here. Mayor Sandhill. Here. I number four, approved the minutes to the March 13th meeting. Move approved. Motion second. Yes. Second, Mr. Bollinger. Yes. Mr. Fannin. Yes. Mr. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Motion well, carries. If you're forced to remove the committee of the park meetings, what's your pleasure? Move accept. Second. Call Mr. Bollinger. Yes. Mr. Fannin. Yes. Mr. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Motion carries. I'm number six. Any comments from the public? Alan, you want? Say no. No, you do it. No comments. Announcements. I have one announcement. Uh, David Chapman called me earlier today from the Cameron County Cancer Association. And he's asking for uh, donations and for my discretionary money. And I told David uh, that I would give $100 out of my discretionary account. And if the council wants to, we can probably come and check this week. Mm -hmm. That's where the council finds. I'll do the same thing. You mean junk scanners? We give them to the drugstore. So I'm okay. okay. You give them a pantry? Uh, I don't know what I've got in mind. So if you do, $100, if you have any left, I don't have any idea. <clears throat> I'm, I've not checked in six months. Okay. But if I've got any in there, yeah, I'll, I'll get you know. I'll find that from Ron. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, under administrative matters, Mr. Chairman, I number one approve the library invoice for $1,470.60 to Office Furniture Outfitters. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that. No, we did not get a purchase order, sir, because the reason being, this bill, the chairs had to be, had to have be a deposit made on the chairs before they could start the manufacture of the chairs. And Terry says we can't pay any bill or any deposit until we have that merchandise in hand. So therefore, the friends of the library made the deposit amount. Which was? $1,000. And this the is coming from... Where? 1400 The 1400 I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of my library budget. That's which what I we do get have. from the fleet and stuff like that? No, it's just out of the city library budget. The budget is, you know, in the city. Is it um, capital outlays, you know, capital expenditures. Okay. But you do have the money yes. in your yes, budget? Yes, I do. I make a motion that we approve the $1,470.78 for the office right here. Do I have a second? Second. I'll roll. Mr. Bollinger? Yes. Mr. Fannin? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Hatmaker? Yes. Motion well, carries. Under administration, item number two is to add on its resolutions 2030 and I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, it says, uh, see all follow. Resolutions 2013 <coughs> A resolution in honor to Carl Wilford for his civic and other contributions to the city of Fallen. Whereas Carl Wilford is a citizen and resident of the city of Fallen, Tennessee. Carl Rover has constantly and continually promoted and supported youth activities <coughs> and programs within the city of LaFalle. Carl Rover has annually supported the city of LaFalle's recreation department and its, its youth projects such as youth basketball and baseball leagues. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Mayor and Council of the city of LaFalle teaching that Carl Rover is hereby recognized as to his positive and everlasting influence on the city of LaFalle and particularly the LaFalle recreation department. 
they further resolve the city of Holland comments, commits, Carl, for his continued civic and every charitable contributions to the city of Holland, Tennessee. Thank you. I wish your dad could have been here. Yeah, we too. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, we appreciate everything your dad's done for the, the youth. We go back a long way with a bunch of us here for your dad. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, David.
right now he's the safety man right now, Hatchford. He, he'll be the safety man if we are administrator. Well, yeah, but he is the administrator, so he's that's the actually the safety right. man. But uh, you said to implement a, a certain <coughs> program. I just, you know. Probably from Uh Well, I, don't, I didn't know what you had in mind. I, yeah, I didn't want to leave it open. If you leave it open, it's not that walk with my food. I'm pretty sure the department heads you handle is pretty much the safety of the following. Yeah. We've all been around long enough to know how to so is that what you got in mind now? The city administrator is usually has yeah. in the past been the, the safety director, so when you hire a new one, I would assume that would who it, that's who it would be. But as of today you're going to As of today I'm doing it. Okay. Okay. Are you good with it? I don't have any problem with it. Okay, resolutions 2013-02 it means the regional <coughs> budget. 2012-2013 budget. I'm going to make a motion to approve. Uh, Second. Second roll. Mr. Bollinger? Yes. Mr. Fannin? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Hatmaker? Yeah, and that one, I'm going to miss the ordinance 2013 03 ordinance to amend the personnel policy in respect to employees' drug testing. This is the final reading. Mr. Pleasure Council. So moved. Second. Call roll. Mr. Bollinger? Yes. Mr. Fannin? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Hatmaker? Yes. Motion carries. Do you have anything else to come before this council? Before you adjourn, we're going to set up a uh, time to do those interviews. Okay. So before we adjourn. Okay, you want to fix the adjourn? Are you done? Is anybody yeah. on the list? Or? No, I need to get the list from everybody. Yeah. Steve, I hate one to do. Sir? I'd like to address the council. Paul, oh, come on. <clears throat> all right, all right, all night. Uh, thanks for allowing me to come up here. My name is Steve Underwood. I live on 132 College Hill Road. And what I'd like to address is take a few minutes to, of your time to talk about the road, uh, College Hill Road. Uh, my concerns regarding some extremely hazardous conditions on this road. There were minor improvements that were done at the bottom of the road, some paving and some drainage done to keep the mud and debris and uh, things from going down in the four lane. Uh, and it did, did a good job with that and it helps, helps control that. However, further up the hill, as you go up around the curve to uh, Hill Lane, I'm not going to go any further than that, although it needs to be addressed too. The road's very narrow, it's been crumbling to the point that there is no road in some places. Uh, it's eroding the residents' driveways, it's eroding their ditches. Um, People are forced to pull over into the driveway to allow another car to get through. There's one section down the curb where only one car can get through. The ditches have become very, very deep. There's no shoulders. Whenever it rains or we have a storm up there, it fills everybody's <coughs> culverts full. And then the leaves and the debris and the mud and pieces of pavement come out into the road, which causes uh, danger to the cars and trucks trying to go up that road because uh, they don't, they're not able to stop and go safely. There's a substantial amount of uh, local and other traffic up there that take that road as a shortcut to get to the lake rather than uh, go on up to the red light and turn up the hill. Uh, to bypass that congestion, it, um, it's, I don't think it's a matter of when, but if, or not if, but when, uh, there's going to be an accident there, and it could be very seriously. So I've done some informal study of traffic. I'm not a traffic person that studies things like that, but uh, I've had time in the last seven days to take account of the cars that go up that road, just to give you a number. So in the last week, or since the middle of last week, I've counted over 900 cars that have traveled up that road. On um, March 27th, there's 197 cars. March 28th, there's 156 cars. March 29th, I counted 203 cars. March 30th, there were 281 cars. March 31st, there was 203 cars. And uh, yesterday, there were 187 cars. Now, this average is up to 200 cars a day. Uh, and I only counted from 7 in the morning until 7 at night. But I got to sleep and things. And uh, I also, if you'll just take a second, <coughs> Dr. Brayman. <coughs> I took some pictures to share with the council, if you'd like to pass those around, of the road so we can visualize what's, what it looks like. Um, and I submit those photos um, looking in both directions so you can get an idea of that and get a visual of that. So I also uh, um, 
in comparison, I went over to West Hemlock Street, and of course we all know Hunter Branch Road and the improvements that were done there. And I used to live on West Hemlock Street up on top of the hill, and that was a very, very dangerous road too at one time, and there was deep ditches there, the road was narrow and crumbling away. I've looked at some of the improvements that's done on that, which I'd also like to submit. And uh, they have sloped the roads, they've widened it a little bit, they put some ground cover in there so some grass would grow mm -hmm. in order to allow that uh, water to drain rather than run off into the road. And it has made it much, much safer. Uh, I also submit to you that comparing College Hill Road with West Hemlock is probably not a good comparison, but there is a lot of traffic on College Hill Road. And I'm concerned of the fact that they fixed West Hemlock Road but uh, not College Hill Road, where it has increased traffic. We have a lot of tourists that roll through there. And I feel that the cost of improving this up to the top of the hill would be substantially cheaper than West Hemlock, because that was improved from the bottom of the hill up over the top. And also the Hunter's Branch Road that was improved last year, I don't know what that cost, but I'm sure that was pretty substantial too, which also made that much, much safer. Uh, my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents have been citizens of this community. I care about this community, it's a good community, it has good people, we all care for each other's welfare. And I also know that um, it is the responsibility of elected officials to look out for our safety and well-being of its citizens as well as visitors that come to our town and spend money in our town. Uh, basic infrastructures in the town include like, safe roads, excellent school systems among other things, and that's what makes our communities thrive and makes us prosper. I hope you will take my concerns and that concerns of my neighbors into account and uh, address the situation and do something about it. I've been told in the past that you guys are aware of it and that you knew that you know know that something that the road does need improvements. But it's getting worse and worse. The uh, people's driveways are literally being washed away. Uh, it's very very difficult to go up there and come up and down the road. And I'm concerned for the safety of the community as well as my neighbors and. Thank you for letting me talk to you. But. Steve, you do realize that um, on the street, you're, the street you're talking about on Hill Street, that's part of his city and part of his county. Exactly. I plan to address the county commissioners too about that part. I understand one side of the road if you're going up the hill, the left side of the cities, the right side belongs yeah. to the county. Right. Uh, it's very rough all the way over the hill. I think that belongs to the county, but uh, to see if something can be done in conjunction with that. I think the cost versus the safety aspect, uh, when you weigh that out, would be uh, less than you know other improvements I've seen in the city. And this is, you know, given the traffic count, although I agree this is informal, it may be very fine. throughout time, that's a lot of cars that go up through there every day. I've seen some near misses and near wrecks. There's a car, in fact, on the curb at the top of the hill in the ditch right now. It's been there for two days. I mean, all those cars you can't, you probably three of them a car out of that. Could be, yeah. could be. Now this is called Jill Road. I know what you're talking about. Okay. But uh, here, we were talking about West Hemlock. Mm -hmm. uh, when Mayor Loverton was sitting here in, in my spot right now, she, this street here was black top under her, West Hemlock. Mm -hmm. And when you've got these ditches, this was a water and sewer grant that the city got from the okay. water lines. They done this. You know, they had to put some pretty bad. Well, there are some places down at the lower part of the hill where the pavement starts and where it's not been done, where the water lines have been re-exposed and the gravel is washed up onto the road. Now. Are you talking about him now? Steve? No, I'm talking about College Hill Road. College Hill Road. Yeah, down at the very bottom where that part was fixed and the gravel was put in there. I know Jim worked at Carl Watt Jim's a couple years ago. No, at the bottom. But it also when the roads out, it's watching people's mailboxes out. If you see the mailboxes, they're leaning. We've replaced ours three different times. And dig deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, to get the concrete, but then the water just washes in and fills the culverts up. And all that debris goes out into the road, and so you can see cars sliding down the road. They can't get traction when they go up the road. And since the road is used by so many people, I feel that it's a concern that needs to be addressed, you know, or taken up with the city. And I, as I was saying, I'm going to go to the county and submit the same information to them. But I, I, I was just questioning, is there some sort of cooperation in a situation like this? Because this is a, this is a hazardous situation. Usually, Steve, we work pretty good with Dennis Potter in the county. Right. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do what we can. But I say, Jim, what did we spend, Jim, on that bottom there? I don't remember now, but we spent 
Everything that was done in the city did it. Even though part of that was in the county. And it made a substantial difference down there because it doesn't wash out on the road now. Although, now the debris is coming up and it's going down there and it's starting to clog it up again. I noticed that today. Yeah, I see it here. This is probably the longest heavy rain we had about two weeks ago, probably. Uh, yeah, but it's been like over a period of about three months, so it's been a lot of rain. Oh, Every time it does rain, and so you go down and clean the culverts out. The next rain comes down, all that gravel and dirt fills the culverts up, and then it comes right over the road. And then it starts to break the edges of the pavement off. There's a few places down there where there is no pavement, just holes. I noticed your sister was here maybe about a year ago. Possibly. Yeah. I talked to her. And uh, we put shot rock in the ditch on your dad's side there. Right. There's a deep, right. in case some car had to drop a wheel off, you couldn't get out. Uh, but Dennis Potter, he Dennis didn't want to do that. I found a condom man, if he gives us the rock, we put him in. Is that right, Jim? We put the rock in, didn't we? After Dennis gave it to us? Yeah. But, now, Steve, any time you work for the county or us, we do it. We just leave what we can do. Right. You know, so part of it's ours and part of it's the county's. Well, what would be my next course of action as far as seeing that maybe something Let's find out if Mr. Mullins there. Uh -huh. He's a strict department man, and uh, I, I want to hear his input. I'll need to look at it. I've not looked at it in a while. But uh, it is the right sides of the county, the left sides of the city. The right side, I think, is where you're talking about the driveways going well, up, going up the hill. Now it's both sides of the yeah. but, uh, uh The right side, where the driveways come into the street. Mm -hmm. That is on the county side. Right. We put some riprap in that ditch, even though uh, the county road superintendent protested, but we did did it anyway to try to stop the ditch from getting deeper. That last year, I guess. Right. Is but, that part uh, of the section, Jim, that we're going to work on when we go no, to Blacktop? No. Can you make it part of it? No, because it's not on one of the. It is not one of the streets that is approved by the state to spend that STP money on. Could it be one of the streets that was approved by this council to go ahead and blacktop it? Well, now, if the council's got the money, yeah. But he's talking about widening the street. Well, at least shoring up the curve of the side of the street. You know, I understand <laughs> I've been there all my life. It's a narrow road, and I totally understand that. There's not a whole way lot to go. I just finished paving my driveway to 900 feet long. It cost me $15,000, and I understand yeah. that too. But I had the same situation to correct it, and it has corrected it by, you know, gently sloping the ditches, uh, put water bars in, and we planted vegetation in order to let that absorb that water because the water comes down like a river. It's, it's terrible. I can look at it on the left-hand side and see what we can do on the city side. <coughs> I'm not ready to comment on it right now, but I will look at it. about uh, getting with uh, uh, Dennis Potter and look at the right-hand side and see if you and Dennis, we can take care of the left-hand side, let Dennis take care of the right-hand side, and maybe we can work together and get it fixed? Yeah, I don't care. If, if, yeah. you know, we'll look at it too, yeah. Uh, eventually, it's all going to be in the four lanes. That's going to be everybody's problem. Thank you. Steve. That's not asking too much, is it? No. Okay. We'll look at it, and I'll make a recommendation, you know. Uh, <coughs> you get back to this gentleman, let him know what your viewpoint is? That? Yeah, pardon. Would there be a timeline in regards to that? I'll do it within a week. Thank you. I'll look at it within a week and have some idea how to approach the situation. Okay. I can't speak for the county road superintendent, but I will look at our side. Well, let me ask you this. When I address this, the county commissioners, would that be fruitful, or should I go directly to Dennis Potter? I'll go to Dennis first, I believe. Steve. All right. <coughs> yeah, it's a conundrum because it's a, the way the road is, and part of it's the city's and part of it's the county's. It's always been an issue. And, We've got several districts like that. We, we work pretty good if each other try to correct the problem. And I've also argued with my father that maybe you should become part of the city. Did you recognize it, Stevie? A long, yeah. time, long time, but it got old on me. I have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all have. We have. 
Last week of Harlan, both of us. Well, good, Harlan. Are, are you back here? I'm retired from teaching him. So you? my mother passed away last year, so I'm living with that now. I'm helping him out. So. Hey, get with Dennis and see what we come up with. Get with Jim. Thank you very much. Appreciate good. it. Okay, thank you, Steve. Good to see you. Same here. Jim, we Some of the minister. If everybody would get me their uh, names, then would the 17th and 18th, that's Wednesday and Thursday, would those days? No. What, what day would work? I'll be out of town that entire week. That entire week? Then, yeah, next week. So next week, Wednesday and Thursday of next week, which would be 10th and 11th. Would that work? Yes. Are talking about in the evening? In the evening time? Sure, yes. Anytime after 6. Okay. okay. What after 6 work for everybody else? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? Is it a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday, Wednesday. and Thursday. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Thursday. 10th and 11th. Yes. Six o'clock, is that what you said? Yes, six o'clock for everybody. Do you think I'm going to go there? Is that right? I think I'm going to go there. I'll just wait. Okay. Yes. Okay, now, are we still on by interviewing all of our local people? Yes, sir. And then if somebody wants somebody else out of town, that's fine too. And if we need to extend a couple more units, we can do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Two things that were discussed at the workshop that somehow mm -hmm. got left off the agenda, the 11th Street Bridge project. Do you want to bring that up? We could for each other, yeah. I, I talked to Nashville. We have a, a grant from TDOT, federal money, to replace the bridge over the railroad at 11th Street. It's a 80-20 match. Uh, the state, if we do it, the grant is ready to be signed and sent back. It's a given. It's not something we apply for. We've got it if we just sign it and send it back. The state will take care of do all the engineering, the whole bit. We pay 20%, which is not to exceed $110,877. Uh, the first estimate, 10% of it was $86,000. They ask that if we accept this grant, we need to send the first payment toward our 20% in with this grant, which is $8,470. So whatever the pleasure of the council, they are waiting on our decision. If, if we turn it down, then they'll let somebody else have it. But if we want to accept it, we kind of need to do so and tie it up. Uh, so it, it's the pleasure of the council. Uh, you know, the bridge has been uh, it's, it's defective. It's going to have to be replaced. We have the opportunity to get it replaced now for this. I don't know when the opportunity will come around again. So it's just a pleasure of the council, whatever you want to do. But if you want to accept this grant, we kind of need to do it and you sign it and, and uh, send it back. You know, the, the worst part about this thing is you and that's one of our newer breaches. Yeah. 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 But it is defective and, and uh, one of these days, they're going to close. I know. So, well, you know, it's just up to you all. We have this grant. What, what the state come in once a year and inspect all our bridges? Yeah, they once inspect year. everything. Even the know. railroad under price, under price and everything. Okay. But, you, won't, uh, you won't beat it. I've looked at it, you won't beat it. But uh, they do everything the engineering. <coughs> they bid it. We don't have to do anything except our 20% matching. Or 
and uh, they want the 8470 when we send this, if, we, if you all decide to accept it. How long have we got to decide on it, Jim? Pardon? How long have we got to decide? Uh, they're asking, this, see, this letter was dated March the 14th. They're asking for a reply within 30 days. So we're going to have to make a decision tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> what other choice do you have? Pardon? What other choice do you have? We can turn it down. Sure, you can turn it down, but you, then you've got a bridge that, right. that's negligent and if right. you get somebody hurt, yeah. or if it falls down on somebody, right. uh, then uh, you're going to put the full, the full bill. Right. Yeah. So, so really, realistically, I don't see as we have a, great, uh, you know, a lot of choice. And when you look at it like you're talking about, you know, if, if we turn it down, then we assume all responsibility. That's exactly right. We shouldn't be so eager. Liability in the whole bitch, you know. We shouldn't be so eager to accept these bridges that these people want to give us <laughs> after they get finished with them. But this is, this does have a cap on it, unlike the Aspen Street Bridge, you know, we got into it and just it ran over and over and over. It does say that uh, this means that the, we'll pay no more than $110,877 of matching cost. Any matching cost above the figure will be covered by the department, by TDOT. So anything over this, you know, this is the top. And it could be less. Did they say when they're going to start on this project? Uh, they will put it in the, in the schedule, in their scheduling as soon as they get this back. Jimmy, I know you've read that. I've read it. It's part of it. You heard it here. Yes. Yes, anytime you get 80 cents on the dollar, it's, if we have the money to match it, it's a good deal for the city. We need to check for Terry and, and, and Jim and, and find out where we got some money at. We, we got, we're just going to have to come up with it. Yeah. I don't see any other choice. I mean, it's better to give 20% than it is 100%. Yeah. If you ain't got the 20%, you're going to have time to hit. You, you'll never get to 100. Right. Well, whatever the players are the council, if you want to accept it, fine, if, you know. But I think we do need to vote tonight. And yeah, Jim's recommendation. Do you need that in the form of a motion? Yes. Does everybody agree with that? We're going to vote on it. We're going to vote on it. Except, except I make a motion, we're going to vote on it. You say right. You want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we go ahead and send $8,470. Right, yeah. Uh, to T dot and uh, tie up the grant and then go somewhere and try to find the money. Somewhere. Yeah, give, give give Terry the, the right to locate the money. Yes. I second. Mr. Bollinger. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. yes. Motion carried. Jim what is it? The district. corner market. It was on discussed. He won't talk about it tonight. Mr. Robinson's here. Um, I think most of you, Jimmy has seen a copy, and I don't know how many of you have seen a copy of the appraisal. So I think most of you know what it says. So uh, do you want to discuss it, or do you want to set up a meeting with Mr. Robinson, with Reed, and I'm, I'm not anyway, sure. Anyway, you, know, you, you want to have? I haven't seen the appraisal yet. I've talked to the appraisers. I haven't read it yet. I know. I'm not seeing it. It's what you want to do. That's probably be best. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I think I guess he's represented by Mr. Trackmaker, and I'll be happy to go meet him. Okay. Is it okay if you might hurt sit for me and read him? Okay. So you need Jim? Yep. Jim, is there anything else about it? Sure. Be faithful. This meeting is adjourned. So call to order the April 2nd, 2013 year board. Call the roll, please. Yeah. Here. Mr. Payton. Here. Mr. Freeman. Here. Mr. Hatmaker. Here. Mayor Sankill. Here. Uh, we do have an application for uh, Tennessee CVS Pharmacy uh, for a beer permit. Chief, you want to comment on that? Yes, they met the uh, they met all the setbacks as far as being too close to the churches. They're good. I'll make a motion. Got a, got a motion here.
second? Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Fainan. Yes. Ms. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Mayor Stanfield. Yes. Okay, the other item on the airport tonight is uh, we have three businesses uh, that I understand that uh, was involved in underage beer selling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did have three businesses that were uh, uh, the Alcoholic Beverage Commission, special agents from the Alcoholic Beverage Commission uh, came to the city and did a uh, undercover thing, for lack of a better word, and they sent in underage, uh, underage uh, people with their ID showing they were underage, and three of our businesses did sell to them. And that would be uh, <coughs> Chinatown, uh, Ninja Hibachi, and Los Carimbres Mexican Restaurant. It's the first offense for uh, Ninja Hibachi and Los Carimbres. It's the second offense for Chinatown. All right, you you have those pres people present. Yes, we, uh, I believe, uh, a lady from Chinatown is here, and I believe this lady, rep you represent Ninja Hibachi, ma'am? Okay. Uh, Detective Wallen went and took the, uh, took all the letters and hand delivered them. So, Los Carumbres was notified that they were supposed to be here. Are you here from, okay. And they're all here, sir. All right, do they, do they have anything to say? Do y'all have anything that you want to bring before the beer board? Anybody? Nobody? No, sir. This is this is uh, this had happened one time before uh, when the Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Uh, of course, you set the fines. The last time the fine, the minimum fine that the beer board set was five hundred dollars for first offense. And what about the second offense? Second offense is up to you. I would recommend uh, a thousand. <clears throat> when does it come to a point that we do something with our license? I mean, I'm just asking. Uh, as a president, that we have. I, I, I really believe, uh, looking at our uh, beer ordinance, that it, uh, it can happen any time, but it usually goes to the third offense. And I think the, uh, at that time there's a maximum of fifteen hundred dollar mm -hmm. maximum fifteen hundred dollars. Plus uh, revoke the license if it's a pleasure. Okay, here. It, it, could it be for so many days or revoke it? I don't know. But I'm asking. Uh, I, I think that again, that's up to you all. Um, I, I think what the Alcoholic Beverage Commission typically does, and you don't have to follow suit, is I think that they they do a set number of days the first time. And then if it continues, then they eventually revoke the license completely. So your recommendation is what? Five hundred and a thousand. I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second for the first offense and a thousand for the second see. one that was the second offense. Yeah, I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. All right, I've got a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Fainan. Yes. Ms. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Mayor Stanfield. Yes. Motion carries. Is there any further business come for the beer board? Everybody motion with your motion. Thank you.